Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Classification Hellworld, written by Guru the Great 100. We, the Kavaha, have ruled this galaxy for over 2,000 years, and have seen many new races join the fold over the centuries and decades past. In fact, some of the Kavahar's best business partners were the ones they helped invest in, which was partly part of the plan. We, the Kavahar, are known for our ruthlessness and cunning, for our great strength and our bright minds. We are known for getting from initial evolution to spacefaring in only four million of their homeworld's planetary cycle. This was a freakish speed for everyone else as the average accepted by the galaxy was nearly 10 million planetary rotations. This was a fact well known around the galaxy, that they were not to be trifled with, and they knew it. After centuries of research into why they were so much better than a majority of the worlds in the Galactic Council, the race of squid-like quadrupeds that inhales mercury as a supporting biological system, the Sutians announced that planetary classifications are a major part of how fast a species can evolve. For instance, they noted the Crustalands, a race of gigantic crab hexapoda, evolved on what was classified as a neutral planet. This basically meant that while there were dangers to the Crustalands to encounter, because they evolved to be giant to combat predators, they were able to outcompete the other organisms in their food chains and grow to the stars with the rest of the races. The Kavaha, on the other hand, evolved from the planet classified as a Death World. This meant that they had evolved on a planet that was teeming with life, and the only way their ancestors could survive was by using their natural cunning to trap and ambush prey. This also led to evolutions in their biology, which made their arms of their already tough carapaces turn sharp like rough blades. In total, there were five classifications and ten subclassifications, which were Garden World, Peaceful Planet, Neutral Planet, Death World, Hell World. The subclassifications were simply 1 through 10, which made classifying a bit more difficult, but simpler in the long run. Today, many important figures were gathering at the glamorous Imperial Galactic Hall, where they would be introduced to a race that had just entered the scene. The humans, they called themselves, and many Gavaha were itching to see what this new race could do. The Gavaha were near the Galactic Hall, like most evolved species were. However, the humans evolved in a very far away corner of space, and thus not very much information was known to either party. As the delegates and royalties from different corners of the galaxy sat down one by one, there was a palpable excitement in the air, as even extremely influential people like them could barely get any information about this new race. And the news they did was shocking already. Everyone was speaking to each other in excited voices as they discussed rumors surrounding the humans. When the speaker of the hall came forwards into the room, he walked into the center of the room and spoke eloquently into the invisible microphone that he knew was hovering somewhere near him. He spoke, To all guests, near and far, I once again welcome you, or welcome you to this humble abode if it is your first time. Today we have a special case, and that would be the humans who developed in a very isolated part of space which we only found due to an error in one of our broadcast relays, which only happened to catch some weak signals. However, a new species in our council brings new opportunities, and thus we all have gathered once more. Everyone looked on with anticipation as the host continued. Well, without further ado, please welcome the human representative, hailing from a country on their world called... United North America, acting as a spokesman as part of a body of their world government, the United Nations. Under the gaze of over 20,000 different races, a small bipedal figure walked out from behind the wall separating the hall and the main floor, taking long strides as the figure confidently took strides towards the host. The host leaned over and whispered something to the human who nodded his head after a short 20 seconds and looked out at the myriad of races before him, smile beaming on his face. The alien races, however, were slightly in shock right now as they looked at the size of this human. 
He was small, as well as bipedal. Of course, they had bipedal races in their organization. However, believe it or not, it was the fact rarer for a race to evolve to become bipedal than it was to evolve to have no legs at all. On top of that, the human was pretty small in comparison to most of the galactic races. There were around 50 or so races that were around the size of the humans, but even then, one could see the size comparison, as life tends to evolve to being bigger. The human stepped forward and introduced himself, saying, Hello all races, my name is Kenneth and I'll be the human diplomat sent by our world to give the most basic rundown on how humans got to where we are today. I have gone through the effort of converting some of our units into your units, so it'll be easier to understand. The alien races were all a little humbled by the good nature of this small creature, as no other race had ever thought of something like converting units to make it easier for others. The human started talking as a holographic screen appeared behind and small screens appeared in front of all the guests, making it convenient for them to better see the information. We, the human race, evolved in our home world, which we call Earth. It is the third planet in our solar system, which has eight planetary bodies, a yellow star, which we call the Sun, and two dense asteroid fields. Our home world planetary gravity is apparently very heavy when compared to other member states present here today. This is our gravity equation, G equals GM divided by R2. Using the gravity of the holodrons, our homeworld's gravity is roughly 2.334 times stronger. This statement caused a lot of gasps as the Holtoldenus were from a death world and their gravity was no joke. The human continued, Human life evolved to accept hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen as well as trace amounts of minor elements. Our species actually went through several evolutions before ending up as what you see standing before you. We humans believe we evolved from an omnivore on our planet called a monkey. Our species used to hunt in the savannas of one of our continents, shown here. He points at the map on the hollow screen. However, the area soon dried and our monkey species was forced from the safe trees we were used to hiding in and forced to the ground. However, those monkeys' ancestors decided to stay walking on land instead of the trees and eventually evolved to stand upright and be able to run short distances in short bursts of speed. The human looked around as he gathered their attention and continued, From here it is believed that we evolved to take the constantly burning heat on our bodies by evolving to have less hair as well as evolving to give us much better stamina, as well as mutation that also no other animal on our planet has, which is sweat. We humans sweat out water and salt compounds from our bodies, which in turn cools us as we run, escape, fight, etc. This built our species into a hunting strategy that we called persistence hunting, which entailed marking a target, aka our meal for the day, and running after it until it became so exhausted from running from us that it eventually collapsed. Many in the council had ashen faces as they heard this, as this was something that no other race had ever developed or evolved with. This was a completely alien concept to them. Imagine being so athletic that you could literally run your prey to death in sanity. The human, noticing all the commotion from the last word, smirked a bit and said, Calm down, ladies and gentlemen, for we are just getting started. Uh, where was I? Oh yes, because we evolved to have such high endurance, we as a people started to wander further and further away from where we evolved. We had no natural borders, as with just a little time, we would adapt to the environments as if we were born there. This time period is known as our hunter and gatherer phase. For over 2.3 million years, all we did was run after our prey to catch it, eat food we picked ourselves from plants and trees, and slowly covered the globe as our tribes got more and more apart. After those million or so years, we get to about 300,000 years ago. This is where we believe that the most recent evolution occurred, which gave us our heightened intelligence and created what we know today as the modern human. Of course, we have gotten better over the centuries, with better food, exercises, sports, and the like. However, this is for all intents and purposes the last known evolution that mankind received. The hall was deathly quiet as the human paused, took a sip of water that was next to him, and cleared his throat. 
He continued under the pressure of all the gazes. From this period on, humans start to advance as a society. And because of all of our people are so far apart, every group had to do their own research. Which meant that things were often invented twice or similar things would get made that would function or look different than the other. However, this also meant that the stuff that didn't work was thrown away and the inventions that did work were kept and expanded upon. The human race invented the farming of crops three separate times. This statement shocked all the council members as they started to realize the ingeniousness of the new race. It was one thing to make a discovery and it'd be lost to time, but the fact that one of the biggest hurdles to a civilization was made three separate times without any outside intervention was incredibly insane. The Kamahar in the stands were hurriedly discussing with their scientists and experts. One of the experts was currently frantically speaking, We have received some of the news from the Galactic Hive seats, sir. They have said that they have reviewed all the materials the humans have sent over for the classification of their planet, and even though they haven't gone through half of the stuff sent, uh, it's already most definitely a hell world classification. The high-standing official's eyes nearly burst out of their sockets when he heard that and hurriedly replied, Get more of this information to the High Father immediately. Send word to the Queen Mother as well. The expert then shook his carapace vigorously to try and shake the nervousness away and said, Not so, sir. The humans had basically just told us that it took to the species 2.3 million years to reach modern human. It's only been 300,000 years since. The high-standing official scoffed. I know I'm not deaf. I heard him say that. What of it? The official was extremely stressed, thinking of all the meetings that he would need to attend to even begin to deal with the humans. The expert, thinking that he defended the official somehow, quickly said back, Well, sir, wouldn't that mean that their species evolved to be spacefaring within 2.6 million years? The official froze, as he recalled what exactly the human had just said. He realized that the scientist was right, and his face turned ashen at the thought. However, he got to his position because he wasn't afraid to ask questions or get answers, and this was no change, even if he was a little scared. He pressed the buzzer that was next to him, and the human stopped speaking as the light lit up in the audience. Many in the audience turned to see the rude person who was interrupting the amazing introduction, but soon their words turned into lumps in their throats, and they were forced to swallow upon seeing that it was the Kavahar. The Kavahar official stood up, but regained his bearing, and said, Human Kenneth, uh, I have a question for you. The human, for his part, did not look the least bit intimidated, and simply smiled and responded, What is your question? The official next stated, You said that 2.3 million years ago, your species started to evolve from monkeys, and around 300,000 years ago, you evolved into what you call the modern human. Correct? The human nodded and replied, Yes, sir. Humanity has gone to great lengths to figure out its origins, and this is our combined effort. The official looked aghast as he stammered out, So, so, uh, you, uh, y your people, humanity, you called it, they, uh, they evolved from lesser life forms into humans and evolved to become spacefaring in, uh, roughly 2.6 million years. The human thought for a moment and said, Yes, I believe so. Earth has a longer rotational period than the Kavahar's homeworld. If I remember correctly, I believe it would be around 1.8 million years converted into your home planet's timescale. The entire audience erupted into heated debate when the human delegate said that, as everyone in the hall started to argue with one another. The human looked at the host in a cautious and curious way, and the host simply did his equivalent of a shrug. The human looked up at the rafters of the races in the view and prepared to yell out, Quiet! He roared out. The officials in the different races all visibly cringed back in sight, if not outright faint from the human's aggressive display of dominance. The human delegate then took a deep breath and calmly said, Yes! I realize that this may be some sort of shock. However, it is true. Please stay calm as I have some information about our planet that I'm sure would interest some of you. At least, it would satisfy the Polgarans, who have been trying to get a Varum virus into our network for some time now. Many in the crowd looked over at the three Polgaran diplomats, whose white fur had all flattened in fear, as their noses quivered with anxiety. The Polgarans were otter-like people, who had amazing talent with computers and computational technology. 
Many in the audience happened to catch on that Volgarans were even detected in the first place. The Volgarans were known as the race that you went to for anything that had to do with computational industry, because they could take enemy hardware down, leave no trace, and the other party wouldn't even know that they had been attacked until it was too late. The human spoke in a commanding voice, grabbing the attention back to himself. Our homeworld, as stated before, has at least two times the gravity of any other races present here today. Earth has regular storms, with many different special classifications, such as hurricane and tornado. It is also home to tectonic activity, which is where the crust of the planet is not one unified piece, and instead is fractured into different splintered pieces, which slowly move under the ground, resulting in fissures, tsunamis, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Just these things alone would be enough to classify our world as a Category 6 death world. The Kavahar delegation were debating about what the human was saying when the main delegate once again buzzed his attention, grabbing light. The human smiled up at him and asked, Yes, sir? The Kavahar delegate, trying to get his question out and not look at the terrifying grin of the human was showing him, swiftly said, Human Kenneth, please spare us the drawl and tell us directly what the classification of your planet is. I do not want to spend all day in this hall, you know, the Kavahar lied through his teeth as he sat aside many days for the specific event, and he was only doing this to get the information the Kavahar needed as fast as possible. The human clicked his tongue in disappointment and sighed, Ugh, very well, we have calculated that our home world to be a class 7 hell world. No one in the audience made a sound. Everyone was stunned hearing the human make this claim and they waited for the Kavahar delegate to refute this ridiculous claim. The Kavahar delegate couldn't refute, as his advisor had told him the human's homeworld was definitely a hell world. Many in the hall started to freak out and rapidly send out new information to their various leaders when the Kavahar did not correct the human's estimation of the planet's classification. The scientist looked over at the data pad in his hand as he read out the instructions sent to him specifically from his master who was in a meeting with the High Father at this moment. He was surprised that had quickly called out, Senior Delegate Rizix, High Father has started a mobilization of a preemptive war on the humans. He says that the humans are such an extreme threat to our superiority that they need to be wiped out as soon as possible, and that if they are allowed to continue to grow, they will become undefeatable soon. The Kavahar Delegate sucked in a cold breath of fresh air as he looked down at the human who started to give his presentation again. The human gave his audience a smile before continuing. Now, let's continue. Next up, I give you the list of the top 200 apex predators the humans have or used to compete with for ultimate survival, and one of these apex predators received an evolution simply being with us for many years. The hall went crazy at the thought of 200 apex predators on a single planet. The Kavaha schemed their secret war. And the human, causing it all, was standing in the middle of the hall, simply thinking to himself, I hope we don't screw this galaxy too much. End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon, WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catal, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.